Hi, I'm Jeffrey Smith of the Institute for Responsible Technology, and I'm talking to Neil deGrasse Tyson today. Neil, you blew it! Now, you may be a great scientist in your field, but when it comes to understanding the difference between genetic engineering and traditional breeding, you got it so wrong. But you don't have to take my word for it. Listen to Linda Call, the compliance officer of the FDA, describing the overwhelming consensus among the scientists working at the FDA about GMOs versus traditional breeding. She says, the processes of genetic engineering and traditional breeding are different, and according to the technical experts at the agency, they lead to different risks. She further said, by trying to force an ultimate conclusion that there is no difference between foods modified by genetic engineering and foods modified by traditional breeding practices, the agency was trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. And that, I'm afraid, Neil, is what you were doing. Now, you're not alone. In fact, most people who are unaware of GMOs might think that it's simply an extension of natural breeding. That's because the biotech industry spent hundreds of millions of dollars, literally, to convince people that there was no issue. They didn't have to spend that kind of money in the U.S. government. It turns out all the scientists who believed that GMOs were different and dangerous and could lead to allergies and toxins and new diseases and nutritional problems, who worked at the FDA, who lodged their complaints, you can find it on our website at responsibletechnology.org under the fraud tab, they were ignored. They were ignored by the political appointee in charge of FDA policy, Michael Taylor, who happened to be Monsanto's former attorney, later Monsanto's vice president and chief lobbyist, and now back at the FDA as the U.S. food safety czar. The policy that he oversaw claimed that the agency wasn't aware of any information showing that GMOs were significantly different. Therefore, no safety studies were necessary and no labeling was necessary. So this false concept, based on a lie, became U.S. government policy. So you're not alone, Neil. You can't be singled out and said, you, of all people, you should know. So many scientists are unaware of the detailed difference between genetic engineering and traditional breeding and what those things could, could mean for human health and the environment. In fact, I asked one of the genetic engineers of the first genetically modified food to be past the FDA's review process. I said, Belinda, is, G is genetic engineering an extension of natural breeding? She rolled her eyes and said, no, of course not. Now, in part two of this, I will explain the details why. This is for the people that want to get into the juicy details and understand the process of genetic engineering and technically why it's so different. So I encourage you, Neil, to get into part two and or go straight to watch the movie Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives, and see the whole story. Anyway, Neil, I'm hoping at the end of this, you'll come and, and put a video out and say, I was wrong. Genetic engineering is not an extension of natural breeding. It has unique risks that we need to pay attention to or let's you and I debate. Maybe I'll see you on the debate floor. Take care.